this guide I'm going to show you how to uh, get your lemur uh, up and running for the first time, how to make it a uh, template for uh, controlling uh, Ableton Live in the Jazz Editor, and um, last of all I'm going to show you just how it all, it'll all work. So let's get started. First of all, make sure you've connected uh, your lemur to your computer with the uh, built-in uh, with the built-in uh, Cat5 cable. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm just going to turn it on. You can see mine is uh, booting up right now. It's the new version two of firmware just released uh, a couple days ago. Actually, it uh, it's very important that you use that because I'm going to be to be using a lot of features in the new jazz editor software, which you you simply can't do in the old uh, firmware. Okay, so you can see the lemur has booted up now. This is uh, an old template I have uh, um, been using before, but um, we're just gonna want to start from a fresh here. So. The first one I'm going to do is uh, going to uh, the settings panel, which is the first button right here, and uh, in the small box called TCP IP setup, you should be able to see the IP of the lemur. You don't have to take note of anything or um, anything, but you just you, the only thing you have to see is just to see if the lemur on the computer have a connection. And you can see mine already has that, and I've I haven't made any configuration. This is a brand new setup uh, I'm doing. I've just installed uh, the Jazz daemon and uh, anything so yeah there's a connection so I'm just gonna go back uh, to this and now I'm gonna go move over here to my computer and um, I'm gonna go into uh, my uh, jazz daemon first of all which uh, the jazz daemon is ve very important software because this is uh, the software that talks with uh, you know with Ableton Live it converts the lemurs network signals to uh, MIDI so uh, Ableton can speak with the lemur and the lemur can speak with Ableton and the first thing you have to do is, again, go into the lemur here, go to the settings, press the third button, which has the jazz daemon icon, uh, and where it says inputs, click there, and uh, you and a lab and your computer, which you're connected to, should show up. You can see, and here it's uh, X MacBook Pro. I'm just going to click this one, uh, double click it, and you should see a lot of outputs called daemon output zero, one, two, and all that. But um, since we're only going to be connecting it once and I don't even know why we'd use the other ones let's just uh, double click on one press connect down here and you should see now it's, uh, it's it's selected here and on my computer over here you can see the lemur receive that and uh, now I'm going to do the same for outputs because the the inputs only is, yeah but whatever let's just get output done here, double click it, and there they are. Now we were all uh, set up actually on the lemur side. Let's just be. Uh, let's just remember to click save config and close. Now we can see over here the lemur connects to the computer fine, and um, let's just close the daemon. But it's still going to be launched up here. Now the next we're going to do is going to the jazz editor, which I have down here, and the jazz editor is. Uh, is the most important piece of software actually for the lemur because it's the one that makes you write kind of uh, templates and all that for the lemur and the first thing the first thing I'm gonna do is very important actually because it makes its new feature introduced in the version 2 called auto map and what that does is it makes uh, mapping things much easier uh, uh, because before the thing you had to do was you had to drag an object into the lemur and you had to say this should be MIDI uh, 0 to to 0 and it should send a custom message but uh, and it would get very tedious if you can see they're like you have to do that at least like 30 times in this but if you just press auto map and uh, use the settings set here uh, you can use uh, parent, but I just use MIDI zero because that that's the signal that the lemur uses, and yeah, th that's what I like best. And they're all going to be control changes. And now I click OK, and I make a new uh, project up here, like this. And let's just make sure, yeah, it's still auto mapping. And the first thing I want to do is press lemur connection, and it should already find the lemur. Now I just click it, and the IP comes down here click connect and now you can see the lemur is displaying the completely same thing as I'm seeing on the jazz editor and the first thing I do now is I click create interface this button down here and it, no matter what it's called actually that's unimportant 
but now you can see we have a blank canvas and uh, what I'm going to do to start with is uh, just use a very simple multiball and a multiball is what you use for like a filter you can see it looks like this I can take my hand and I can move it around and if I click this button up here in the jazz editor I can you can I can uh, get my what I'm doing on the lemur ref reflected on the on the screen on my computer very handy actually and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make this fill this part of the screen we have a nice big thing and what I'm going to use is just use this control filter and uh, let's just check if I go into MIDI under mapping here you can see it's already been mapped because of the auto map and now let's just go into live now the most important thing to, in live is to make sure you have your MIDI mapped correctly because if you look into if you go into uh, live preferences uh, you can see up here these are all control surfaces it's very important to set with the lemur you can see the first thing you do is uh, set control surface 1 to the first one is, should just be none because then you're sure that it's not gonna uh, use any proprietary controls or anything so let's just go in here select daemon input 0 and daemon output 0 in here and uh, down here let's, uh, let's click all these three on daemon input 0 and daemon output 0 select them all and the rest we can just leave them on because nothing's going to be talking to them the way we've set them up right now and now the lemur should already be talking with Ableton this light up here it lights up uh, whenever MIDI da whenever live uh, reads MIDI data so I can just try moving and it should pretty much light up yep right up there it's uh, moving and when I let go bam it disappears so actually very simple the only thing we have to do now is uh, just let's get some uh, music into line let's take this track and let's see great it's already preloaded in here um, and let's just uh, let's start playing it uh, I'm gonna take the take the volume down so you still can hear me I'm the master here so let's see oh this is maybe a bit too I don't know. <laughs> Let's keep it here. Maybe I should just turn my computer. Up. Okay, we have a track playing now, and um, uh, you should probably be if you're watching this. You should probably be pretty familiar in live to use basic effects and all that. So I'm just gonna drag an audio filter onto the track, and you can see I have a filter down here. I can you can see it modulates the audio pretty nicely, but. If I move this, it still has no effect. It's not been mapped in Ableton. And the way I do this is I click on this little MIDI button up here, and a lot of things turn blue. And everything that is blue can be uh, mapped using MIDI. And le and uh, the way to control this, you can unfortunately click on this. It will still modulate the audio, but these two uh, fields down here, they do the same thing. So it's still a pretty tedious way to do it. You have to it and let's just hope the zero function you can see it came down there when I moved my hand over here it says one slash zero which means maybe channel one function zero and if we move it upward which is the bottom one I should get maybe one and if we let go now on the MIDI button you see now the settings in Ableton reflected what I have on here and if I take now you can hear it's being modulated and this is basically how you do it Oh, I love this part. <laughs> and uh, th the same thing goes in Ableton. If I drag this in Ableton, you can see it's going to change in Lemur as well. It's very simple. So now you've already made your first mapping just by dragging something on and going into Ableton and mapping it.